Good day, guys. Hope you having a nice day. We'll, pro, uh, we'll continue on our. Okay. Trying to see something. We'll continue on our head and neck anatomy, and and today I think we'll be we'll be talking about the metopic suture and the frontal suture. Okay. I'm trying. Come. Let me mark up something. Okay, today we'll be talking about the metopic suture and the frontal suture. All right. Um, what is a me metopic suture? Uh, this is this is the metopic suture that I see here. Let me get my highlight pen. Uh, this is the metopic uh, suture that I see here. All right. This is a coronal suture. This is a sagittal suture, and this is a squamous suture. So let's proceed. What is the metopic suture? The metopic suture is also known as the frontal suture. It is a fibrous, let me take this here, take it down. It is a fibrous joint that divides the two halves of the frontal skull. Okay, guys, now the frontal suture is a fibrous joint that divides the two halves of the frontal bone. That's in infants and children, okay? That's to tell you that it is not found in adults, all right? And typically, it completely fuses uh, between three to nine months of age okay with the two halves of the frontal bone being fused together and it is called metopic suture although this term may also refer specifically to a persistent frontal suture you know in adults is supposed to go right and if it persists it is still called metopic suture now this is just the frontal suture or the metopic suture in 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 um infants. I this is an infant skull, okay? You could you could remember from your knowledge of adult skull that um this this uh, suture actually fuses to form um okay it fuses right the two bones they fuse all right and this um this anterior frontal becomes a bregma this becomes a coronal suture. And stuff like that. All right, so let's move. We said that if this suture is not present at birth because both frontal bones have fused, that's cranial synostosis, it will cause a keel shaped deformity of the skull. Why is it that this suture is, is, is important in, in infants? Why is it present? This is because this suture needs to be there because the brain actually grows in size, all right. And um, when when being given birth, so the bones actually override so that uh, the infant is, the infant's head is able to go through uh, the the birth canal. And if this is fused at birth, this is called cranial synostosis. Okay. Now this is the normal arterial frontal, and this is the mectopic craniostosis. All right. This is the mectopic craniostosis. Now. It's present in the fetal skull along with other cranial sutures and fontanels produce a malleability to the skull that can facilitate movement of the head through the cervical canal and vagina during birth. Okay, so the metopic suture is very, very important and it needs to be present. All right, it absent is something else. Okay, now the dense connective tissue found between the frontal uh, the dense connective tissue found between the frontal bones is replaced with bone tissues as the child grows older okay this is a mectopic suture or mectopic bridge okay uh, the, the photo demonstrates a typical non-surgical mectopic bridge proper evaluation to be done by a qualified specialist and follow up may be required and stuff like that. And now, what is the clinical correlation? Um, if this frontal suture actually persists, maybe in some individuals, the suture can persist or totally, totally or partly into the adulthood, and the, it is referred to as the persistent metopic suture. It has a prevalence of about 4% in females and about 2% in males. The suture can either bisect the frontal bone 
and run from the nation to the to the bregma or persist as a partial metopic suture okay now where the part of the suture survives and is connected to either bregma or the nation or it can persist as an isolated metopic fissure and persistent frontal seizures are of no clinical significance although they can be mistaken for cranial fractures if you have a persistent metopic suture of course the metopic suture was um was important to you as a child because it helped you um, come out of the cervical canal to, to to come out of the bed canal okay and where you grow up it will it will be of no harm okay although when you have it people could feel you have a fracture on your hair uh this is the this is a persistent metopic suture okay instead of the frontal bones fusing together you have a persistent metopic suture and for real people could feel this is an injury okay people could feel this is a fracture but this is actually a persistent metopic suture Right, so next now we say persistent metop uh, a persistent frontal suture uh, is visible in radiographs right they can be useful for the forensic identification of human skulls remains persistent frontal sutures should not be confused with supranasal sutures right supranasal sutures is a small zigzag shaped suture located at or immediately in superior to the glabella okay that's a supranasal suture located at or immediately superior to the glabella okay now, this, this is all for the metopic suture uh, we spoke about the metopic suture also known as a frontal suture on mbbs niger if you are watching this I like how we do our stuff. Kindly do subscribe to our channel. I'll see you guys in the next.